Some things in science can be very hard to distinguish from witchcraft. It's no wonder that the alchemists that set the early foundations of chemistry saw a large part of their work as magical. But even in modern chemistry, there are effects that come off as nothing short of black magic. Case in point is this video posted by Reddit user Budget Cuts that appears to show a chemical that changes color depending on how it's viewed. Now, naturally, I found this effect amazing and wanted to replicate it myself. But unfortunately, the user does not state what chemical was used in this video. So I ended up taking matters into my own hands and started reading and experimenting to try recreating this effect. Now what could possibly cause an effect like this? Reading through the comments in the chemistry subreddit, some people suggested gold nanoparticles, others suggested liquid crystals, and some even said that the video was probably just fake. But in any case, the user does state that he was doing a titration, so this does narrow down the list of possible reagents used somewhat. Is it possible that just any chemical will do this? Well here's some phenolphthalein, which is a, a very common pH indicator used in titrations. From the side, it's pink. When viewed from below, it's lighter, but it's still definitely pink. So clearly this won't work with just any chemical. There is an effect called pleochroism, where a material will change colors depending on the angle that it's viewed. Now this is not the effect that we're seeing in this video, because pleochroism only happens in certain kinds of crystals, and here we're just dealing with an isotropic liquid. With that being said, it was an adequate start to a Wikipedia binge that led me to an article on dichromatism. Dichromatism is an effect where a substance changes color depending on its thickness or concentration. Now the phenomenon is only partially physical and has a lot to do with how our eyes perceive color. It actually wasn't until very recently that the effect was explained in scientific detail. Some of the most dichromatic substances known include pumpkin seed oil and bromophenol blue. Now I couldn't tell you where to buy pumpkin seed oil, but I do have a lot of bromophenol blue to play around with. Much like phenolphthalein, bromophenol blue is another pH indicator, but except this one is used at lower pH ranges. Now I know what you're thinking. Why is it called bromophenol blue if it's orange? Well, let me show you why. I'm going to drop a tiny bit of this bromophenol blue into water. And as you can tell, it's an incredibly potent dye. It only takes a very, very tiny amount to color the solution incredibly strongly. I diluted it down a bit and placed it inside of a bigger flask. And you can clearly see some of its dichromatic effects. But it still doesn't look quite like it did in that video. But after all, this is a pH indicator, and its color is highly dependent on the pH of the solution that it's in. I'm going to see if I can titrate this bromophenol blue to see if I can get it to a pH where it resembles the colors that we saw inside that video. And man, doing this titration brings me back to the days of getting my chemistry degree. Now here I have to be very careful how much hydrochloric acid I add, because if I add just a drop too much, then the solution is going to completely flip colors. Alright, I think I need just one more drop here. Oh, come on! I back titrated the solution with some sodium bicarbonate, and I got to look very similar to what was in that video. So this leads me to believe that the stuff in that video was definitely bromophenol blue. And it's crazy how these dichromatic effects show up, because viewing it from the side, it's like a, a pink or purple color. But when I hold it up to the light, it's a very light blue or even almost clear. It's really an amazing effect. I should point out that this effect is highly dependent on the kind of lighting used. For example, if I use a cool white fluorescent bulb to light up this solution, it's really clear that the solution is dichromatic. You can definitely see the pink and slightly blue colors there. But if I switch to a warm white incandescent bulb, the effect almost completely goes away. You can barely even tell that it's a dichromatic solution there. So it's very, very dependent on the kind of lighting that you use. So how does this effect work? Well, in a dichromatic substance, there's typically going to be two main transmission peaks on the visible light spectrum. One that's going to be broad and weak, and one that's going to be narrow and strong. But like I said earlier, this effect has a lot to do with how our eyes perceive color. I think I can best demonstrate this with some lasers. Here I have three lasers. A yellow one, a sky blue one, and a red one. I'm going to show you what happens when I point these lasers inside that solution. When I shine the yellow laser at the solution, the light gets absorbed extremely quickly. You can see how the light barely makes it inside of the flask. So no matter what way you look at it, from the side or from the top, you're not going to see really any yellow light making it through. The blue light gives a different effect. As you can see, the solution does absorb a lot of that blue light, but not nearly as strongly as it did that yellow light. So by the time the blue light travels to the edge of the flask, most of it does get absorbed. But if we look at it from the top or bottom, there's still a lot of blue light that makes it through. And this is why it has that blue tint when you look at it from the top or bottom, but not from the sides. Now the red light shoots straight through the solution. It's barely changed by going through the flask. Now the reason why the solution is going to look blue when viewed from top or bottom is because most of the blue light is still making it through and our eyes are more sensitive to the blue light that's going through as opposed to the red light. But when you look at it from the side, there's very little blue light left. So your eye is going to pick up that red color and that's why it appears to change colors when you look at it from different angles. 
I should point out that the dramatic color changing effect seen in this mysterious flask isn't completely due to dichromatism. If you notice that when the flask is moved upward, there's a very sudden shift in color at a certain point. Now this sharp transition point is due to refraction, and wouldn't happen if the solution had the same refractive index as air. So that's about all I have for you guys today. I want to give a big thank you to all my patrons and Patreon who are supporting these videos, because I could not do this without your guys' help. And also, you guys should check out my Instagram page, because I actually post a lot of content there. Just very few of my subscribers follow me there, so you guys should check that out. And yeah, until the next time, stay safe and happy lazing.